What's going on guys, all of Blitzel here, today with some more Crown Zenith content. Today we have Rapid Strike Urshifu with Radiant Eternatus. Rapid Strike Urshifu was a very powerful deck for a long time, but has really fallen off. Um, really since Palkia, since I think Astral is really when it started to fall off. But I feel like it's kind of back with Radiant Eternatus. So let's get into the list. We have our 2-2 two -two Etern er, <laughs> Urshifu line. The Urshifu... Its first attack for one fighting energy does 30 and 120 more if it became the active this turn in the attack that we're building around its, its G Max Rapid Flow, which does 120 damage to two of our opponent's Pokemon, but we did discard two energies. So we're going to try to soften things up with the Inteleon V Max, which its ability lets it discard a water energy once per turn and put 20 damage on two of our opponent's bench Pokemon. And that synergizes very well with Melanie, which can help us get Urshifu going all in one turn. So after that core concept, we have Eternatus to get those into play, Mew to set that up, or Mew to help us set up, Medicham can help us um, hit some key breakpoints with its Yoga Loop attack, which lets us place two damage counters, and if it knocks anything out, we either take an extra turn. We have Zigzagoon to help us reach numbers, and Yveltal is probably the strangest card in this list. My thought process behind it is that against Lugia, we're going to try to Rapid Flow and Board Wipe their two Archeops, but then our response after that's kind of weak if they just load up one huge Lugia. So with the double turbo a Veltal package, our goal is to, after we rapid flow both Archeops, we just spam Cry of Destruction, and then eventually go, go in with an Inteleon or something. Then the rest of the list is just trying to get going as fast as possible. We have the four Melanies, one Bird Keeper, one Boss, one Marnie, one Raihan. We're just trying to get going very fast. Scoop of Net helps us reuse Mew. Um, Zigzagoon and helps us reuse Eternatus if we happen to start it. Four Quick Ball, four Gear, two Ultra Ball just to help us get into the game. Hisui, playing two Hisuian, ensure that our Eternatus is never prized. We have the Bucket and the Lotto to find our energy. Seal Stun for the consistency as we have no V-Star power. And the two Cord stuff is reuse the Waters to Double Gunner. Basically, infinitely. There'll be some battles after this with some commentary. If you like the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. The, out, the support lately has been insane. I thank you guys so much for it. And yeah, enjoy the battles. All right, on to the first game. We lost the flip. So they'll, they'll be going first. And this opening hand is not the worst, but not the greatest by any stretch. So they're opening Comface. We're against some sort of Lost Box variant, which I think we're pretty favored into. Um, we can really uh, we can really take out a lot of their one prizes extremely quickly with, with Double Gunner and Rapid Flow. So... Well, flower selecting is gonna pass. So onto our turn, or should we, that's not a very that's an okay top deck. Right, Medicham is much more important as much as it felt tall. Poke Gear, Bird Keeper. Alright. I think what we wanna do. I don't know if I want a bird I don't want a bird keeper and a Mew. Because if I go to the Eternatus, my hand's quite dead. Which so we found Quick Ball anyway, which is spectacular. Mysterious Tail gives us Capacious, probably. Uh, yeah, that's what I think I want. So I can have plenty of double gunners here in the future. Well, and considering we're facing Lost Box, we don't have to worry about facing, or we don't have to worry about a Marnia in most likely. So we'll Quick Ball out of water, which to get the Radiant Turnidus, attach water to Urshifu, and then um, set up both of our guys. So our hand's very good. We just need to find that Rapid Strike energy. There is a debate whether I should attach that water or not. That becomes very obvious if I hit Melanie off of this gear. But if that means if I whiff Melanie, I'm not just completely off a turn. But it doesn't mean I have one less double gunner. So there's an argument to both sides. So they attach a capture. Probably a Cramorant. This Mew's likely going to go down. Yeah, there's the Cram. Yep. So Mew. Bye bye Mew. I think we promote the Eternatus. So, gear. Melanie, yeah, I got what I'm talking about. So, I think we have Melanie to an Inteleon. Oh, we throw up like energy. So, we can clear both come phases this turn as they got no mana fee down. I am, I'm going to rapid flow both the, the come phase because um, then they, they, they will draw engine. If I take out the Cramorant, they can still draw cards and get things in the loss zone and potentially build something up to pressure us, but now it'll be a little harder for them to do that. So, 
I don't necessarily have the strongest follow-up. I don't have rapid strike energy. But we will see. If he does rope, which I wouldn't necessarily mind, because like that activates Raihan. So man there's Manaphy. A little late, but. Um So we we might be going for a crowbat on our next turn to just try to find that rapid strike energy. Choice belt. Sable on the bench and spit for 140. Okay. Italian V is very not great. Got the crowbats. I have plenty of outs here. Nothing off the gear. Go for a double gunner. Go out for three. And that's pretty rough. So I think we'll just double gunner again. And just pass. Unfortunate. Hopefully we can draw out of this because otherwise things are not looking super great. So we're kind of stumbling here in the mid game. If this Archie goes down, we're kind of in a tough spot. There's a Charizard, so yeah, this Urshifu in all likelihood is not going to survive. It's not nothing. I think we're going to be going for a, a, a Yoga Loop play next turn then. Because I can, I have, I have Raihan. I think I'm going to go for a Yoga Loop and then into a Marnie after that. And just hope that our opponent just doesn't have it. So yeah, there goes the Urshifu. Tragic, but expected. All right, so there goes the Urshifu. Let's, we're gonna promote our Mew. Um, Seal sounds a perfect top deck. It's, so we quick bought Drapion, send out the deck, uh, Mew. We have a D, we have the DT and the, and the um, Rapid Strike Energy net, because it's pivot. So we do this and double gunner. Then we need Raihan to the yeah, or yeah, to, to the Inteleon, grab the Rapid Strike Energy, Revenge the Metacham, net the active, and then we Yoga Loop and take out that Sableye or Manaphy. It doesn't really matter because we're using Double Gunner next turn regardless. And we save the Seal Stone, so now we can pop the Seal Stone and go for a Marnie and have a big three, ply, three prize play with, between the Yoga Loop last turn and then the Double Gunner and uh, max swirl max spiral and now we're sitting pretty nice here so got the sable eye both of a pretty amazing hand to be able to knock us out so we'll attach to active so even if we get rock sand we still always have enough energies and looking pretty good i think Considering it's a Radiant Charizard, they're not playing Lightning in or any Lightning attackers. It's a Comfey. Switch cart. The damage is pretty irrelevant. So, Comfey. Chorus. So. I mean, it's no boss, so they have to get through our Inteleon this turn, which is pretty unlikely, I think. We can just go into the other Inteleon, get the Rapid Strike in hand. Now, right, on to the next one. Sorry, my mic got out a little bit there. Uh, going second again, darn. Pretty good hand, though. So, there are now lots of Pokemon. Um, well, they definitely should not have done that. That's why you don't play down Pokemon. I'll draw pass. That's even better. We can actually get the 100 Furious Blows playoff now. We just need to find a Switch card. We have the Melanie. We have the Rapid Strike Energy. What I was saying is, you drop a type of Coco, which, yeah, in a lot of matches, it's good. But in any fighting deck, like I'm playing, you never want to drop that card. So you always want to wait. You never want to play down Pokemon. Like in a format without hand disruption, you don't need to drop Pokemon going first or second for that matter. Just drop your your lead because you're more you're just gonna lose because you re either reveal something to your opponent that might make them play differently, or you just drop a Pokemon that's suboptimal because you did not know what your opponent was playing. 
So we got the whole playoff. We popped, we popped up with the Crobat and then got the Seal Stone for the knockout. And now we're definitely in the driver's seat of this game. They can Thunderjock stall. I think that's probably their best best route, I guess. Maybe if they have Raihan and can Max Glunas this turn, that'd be a bit annoying. That's my RCS. But considering how they did so little. Okay, they must have top. Or, yeah, they got the research. So. Alright. I think we're going to attach to our Urshifu and Marnie. Rope would be very good card to find. It gives us a couple prizes. Alright, we're going to get Thundershock. So hopefully it tails here. And. Alright, that's great. So we're going to attach. Yeah, we can, we can Lotto. No. Yeah, we, we attach. I could have waited for the other side of this and corded that attach regardless. But keeping the energy down does always make Melanie a live draw supporter. So I think this is okay still. We get Zigzagoon to thin it out. And then we just Outer Fierce Blows for 120. Alright. Ultra Ball. Arceus. So they can't ride on this turn, so we're still under no pressure of a Trinity Nova. A Thunder Shock would be quite annoying, though. We don't have a great hand to. You could definitely buy them a turn. But in another tail as well, unfortunate. Gear does not decide to cooperate. We get 100 free blows for the knockout. I think we've kind of checkmated our opponent here. Even if they knock out the Active Urshifu, they have to deal with the, the Benched One. And, but they don't have anything on their board that's not weak to fighting. So they would need to like, disrupt our hand, and then Temple of Sinnoh? Is there one can- or is- keeps them alive? So, they do have Starburst, so they can get double turbo, and I assume they- but then if they get double turbo, they can't temple, so... That's- yeah, so, I think we got him. I guess if they had Big Charm, that could- Live, up, live to fight another day, but I still feel like that's sort of delaying the inevitable. Tax the double turbo. Lightning. The core and knockout. So we got the game. Alright. That's good. Alright. Just pop the Archie for 100 fierce blows, and that will be a good game. The next one, the second three games in a row. Come on, that's a pretty strong opening hand. Though. Never like having a talent on an opening hand. One thing I do want to experiment with this Zork, some sort of Zork. I want to experiment maybe Rangaroo. I would play Rangaroo, but the bench base is so tight in the stack. I honestly, I think switching cups are probably the worst idea because they're getting with Mew. And they can prevent weird hands like this. I don't think the deck has space for them. The space in this list is pretty tight. So we like to bucket, thin the deck. Uh, we have an Archifu and the other Inteleon in deck, so that's great. Gear does not want to cooperate. So we attach the water here instead of the of the um, uh, what's it called? Rapid Strike Energy. Because if for some reason we go down, like he has Zigzagoon, and we and our Urshifu goes down, then we have Melanie as a, as a live top deck, and I think it's more likely that he plays Zigzagoon and can find the knockout, then he Marnies away my hand. Or well, and if he does money away my hand, I don't I don't think he's out he's threatening me. So Pierce has the attack, they're very vulnerable, so yeah, he does with the peony. So we can knock him back out with 100 Furious Blows, but our hand is still extremely lacking. Two level balls, I can get in. Man, if he, that's an important card for him, but we can start pressuring that immediately with the Inteleon and a Growlithe, so he'll fill up that bench and punch for 190. Oh, somebody knocked out the, the Arcanine did. 210. <laughs> Alright, 
three with this. Marnie, that's good. We can draw some cards. Hit a Melanie, that's great. So, prize, Coop of Nat. That's alright, we can pick up the Eternatus. After you use that climactic gate, um, you can just scoop it, scoop up net it, and clear that bench spot for something more meaningful. We have the knockout with Max Spiral if we need it next turn, if our guy goes down. I think we just promote the Eternatus if this Urshifu goes down, because then we, have, we can be available to do both plays or if uh, we can potentially Rapid Flow, we can Yoga Loop. We have the Yoga Loop first before our Rapid Flow. We can't quite get the, the Manaphy. But it leaves all our options open by promoting the Alternatives, where if we promote Inteleon, then we're pretty much locked into that play. So we will knock out our Urshifu. Taking the- losing- just point taking two prizes here isn't the biggest of deals, because we're going to pick up this one prizer and then we'll have to get through two multi-prizers to win the game. So it's probably not- price map is tough. Zigzagoon as well. So we actually have the Yoga Loop play. We can quick ball for Metacham. Double Gunner, the Manaphy, and then ping it with a Zigzagoon, and then we do have the Knockout. And can take an extra turn, which is always pretty epic. But our follow-up is rather weak, so hopefully we take a good prize card or top deck. Melanie, that is pretty good. So we can Melanie to the Act. Yeah, we quick quick ball the Eternatus. Um, yeah, we get Mew. Melanie to the active. Get the Rapid Strike Energy. So we can take a three pop. We have a two prize play here. I think we. I think we rope just to preserve the energy on the Metacham. He's not too bad of an attacker in this matchup. We bench. Count, yeah, we bench Mew. And then we just take the knockout. So that was a big three prize swing for us. And our opponent. Might be tough for them to attack. We don't have all their support guys. We found two rapid strike energies. Anyone on the meta champs? I mean, there's only one left. So rapid falling again is going to be kind of tough. So we might be using smash uppercut. Quick ball. Grab lift. So considering they dropped the ultra ball, that means yeah, they do have. Which is pretty fortunate for my opponent. They can get Manaphy back with the rod level ball. So even they did a very good five card hand there. So we are, I mean, we always can just double turbo retreat if worse comes to worse. Seal Stone's a great top deck. My, my opponent sort out their top deck some RC because they could just top deck a quick ball or something. And then they're just doing OG damage. So I'm gonna. I think our play this turn is to go for Smash Uppercut, because we always can follow that up with Zigzagoon Net Yoga Loop, and then close with something like Inteleon. And we do have that Forest Seal Stone. Uh, the Forest Seal Stone to ensure the Rapid Strike Energy, and the final Rapid Strike Energy. So, on top of Rope, we can just go back into our Mew, and that's the game. So, bench, we can probably the Metacham. Attach the seal stone to the crowbat. Don't need alchemy yet. Uh, ping the Arcanine and Yoga Loop. And then we just search for the Rapid Strike Energy or boss and clean up the game. And. We, I didn't scoop. Alright, let's go. Okay, on to the next one. <laughs> so I got into this one a little late, so. We did we did pull off the Eternatus play, set up two Inteleons. And we have a strong hit next turn with a pair of double gunners and Melanie. Opponent did get Manaphy down, but not much else. So we can double gunner, double gunner. We can actually win if the cards fall right, but yeah, that's not gonna happen. So do we go for the, I think Crobat was prized, if I remember this game correctly. Alright, I think we're just gonna pass. We don't need to play, play the gear because 
we're not playing that supporter, so we can thin next turn before we before we replay that gear. So there. We don't really want this Mew to go down, but it's probably inevitable. Honestly, we don't want them to find us. They're down one net already, and uh, we under where should we? Uh, I guess the Intellion. That's kind of risky because we see the lightning energy. Looking back, I think this is probably the right play, but I don't know because I see lightning energy. It makes you think Raikou's area or something like that. And that would obviously be very problematic. So, the concealed cards, switch card, the heals them, so that's pretty good for them. Gate. So, we see a Moonlight Shuriken, which could set up, take one prize and set up our Urshifu or one of our Inteleons. Uh, ha, Raikou. Dang. So, that's the main three prizes for them. So, that's pretty rough for us. We're going to have a pretty strong follow-up here. So there's the Lightning Rondo. Just enough to knock us out. So. Alright. Double Gunner. So we do have the knockout here with our Zigzagoon, so I think we'll quick ball the Eternatus for the Zigzagoon. So we can potentially pull off a pretty cool rapid flow play this turn and take out the Raikou and Greninja. Sealstone's an excellent find. And Raihan's excellent as well. So we can Raihan to the active and put a water on there. Grab a rapid strike energy or Urshifu. We get the Urshifu and Evolve. We put the Sealstone on the Inteleon. Sealstone for the Rapid Strike Energy, and then we take three prizes. So we have a big four prize turn to stay in the game. So we take out the Raikou and the Reed Greninja. And now our opponent is kind of in a weird spot. I suppose if they can drop the... If they can get Manaphy back down... I do think Cheryl could be a good card to add in this deck. There's not a whole lot of space. And it's just not a card that helps you draw. The deck is a little in on the inconsistent side. And Cheryl is not going to help you get into the game. So it's definitely a card worth thinking about. But I don't think it is quite meaningful enough to include. So they're bringing down all the Kung Fays. So I don't know what they're digging for. Probably Rod to bring back up Manaphy. Maybe they're going to try to spit us this turn. And then try to finish it off with a Kyogre. All the VIPs are going away. So... Another Comfate down. Eight cards left in deck, so there. Uh, attach retreats. Yeah, there. And there's a pass. It's already, they're already retreated, so we can... Double Gunner. Alright, we're just going to play down our whole hand here. Go for the Melanie and go for the game. So we can just play down our whole hand. Draw five cards. There's the Melanie, the final card. And that is a good game. Let's go. Rapid Flow. <laughs> so that is Urshifu Eternatus. If you made it this far in the video, you're an absolute legend. So thank you guys so much. Please consider subscribing and liking the video on your way out. I have lots more Crown Zenith to come. If you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. I'll get to them as soon as I can. I was pretty impressed with this deck. It has a lot of highlight reel potential. It's very fun to play. I don't think it's the most competitive deck ever. It's a little on the inconsistent side, but it is very fun to play. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. And this has been All Out Blitzel. Goodbye for now.